InkProducts.com has now released its new Executive Series 3 for the new Canon printer, which is the MG5420, 5422, 5520. Now with the system, you're going to get all the parts and pieces to install it. You're going to get refill syringes with long tips so you can refill the ink tank back up. Safety catch, which I'm going to show you how to put on. Purge tips and install hose brackets. Now this is our newest system. comes with our double loop hose bracket. On the newer printers, even like Epson, the print heads aren't strong enough to draw the ink. So by eliminating the backflow dampers and designing something like this, it's worked perfect. You get good draw, ink draw to the print head. It just works excellent. Now what I'm going to do is turn the printer on and then I'm going to remove the cartridges and show you how to install our continuous ink system. Okay, now once the cartridges come over, you can remove the can of cartridge or refillable, whatever you have in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the printer so now we can go back in. You can lower this front tray here. Get it out of your way. Now I unplugged the printer because we're going to need to do hose travel back and forth. Okay, I want to point this out. You're going to get a piece of felt type material that you're going to put over this area of the plastic. So if the hose hits that, it's not going to rub anything on the hose, and it makes it run quiet. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the hinge. I'm not going to remove it completely. I'm going to put it back on in a minute. But I'm going to show you how that's done. On the, on the side here in the back is a little locking clip. If you push it down with your finger, it comes right off. Now that's what I was doing. Let me point it out. I stuck my finger behind there, and I kind of pushed down on that, so it will release the hinge. There's one on each side. We're only going to do that temporarily so we can run our hose behind it over here. And then I'm going to install one other hose bracket right here. And then another one on the outside. Okay, now I just put the hinge back on. It fell off. Now I'll get the cartridges ready. It up and stick it just like that. Peel and stick it. This is where I'm using as my reference right here. Okay, now I peeled off a piece of tape. Now that, that exposes the two sided tape. And there again, I'm going to line it up right there. I put it in just about here, like that. And I lined it up pretty good over here. Now I'll push it and stick it to the top like that. Okay, now we're going to put the cartridges in. You may want to get a paper towel to lay them down on. And if you don't want to get ink on your hands, get yourself a set of rubber gloves. Because chances are you're going to get a little ink on your hands. And then have another paper towel to wipe off any excess ink that may leak. Now I opened up the ink tank just to check, make sure all the plugs are in because you're going to rock it. That's going to take all the ink out of the isobaric chamber. Sometimes it'll get in there when you ship these. you got to rock it. Just like that. Then you'll be able to stand it up. Okay, now after rocking the bottles, I want to go over and give you a little shut off, ink shut off. Slide it forward, it'll squeeze on the hose. Now there's another way you can do it. You can take one of these little large paper clips. You can temporarily fold the hose and do the same thing. You just don't want to forget not to open that up. Because if you forget, then you'll starve the print head of ink. So there again, this is another way you could do it. But you're going to get it like this. We're going to shut it off. 
Okay, now I'm going to take the cartridges and lay them down upside down. Just like that. If you notice, I've already marked the orange clips, so I know how to put them on the next time so we don't cross-contaminate any colors. Now there's a piece of black tape here, or you might see a rubber band. So you want to take that off. That holds them all together. And there's another one up front. Let me point it out. There's another one right there. That'll hold it together when you're going to put it in so you don't hoses don't get all tangled up. So you don't want to take that off, put it to the side. Now this is important how to take the clips off. You're going to lift, unsnap, but you don't snap it and pull it all the way up. You'll damage this end of the clip. Just pick it up a little bit and slide it to the back. When you slide it to the back, that's going to unlock the clip. So you pick it up and then you slide it backwards. There you go. And see, it comes right off. I want to point it out. These are the little clips on the side that hold it to the side of the cartridge. That's why you don't want to pull right up. You'll damage them. Okay, got all my clips off, and you want to save your clips. Now, with the CIS, you get rubber gaskets for the printhead. Or put in there should you have any air leaking from the cartridge. I'm not going to put them in because I found I don't have to. But if you find that you have a problem, then you remove the cannon gaskets and then you put them in the printhead. You can take the printhead out to do that. Check with your um, printed instructions and it will be more detailed about that. But now you see I have everything all together so I can flip it over and put it in. Last piece of tape I've got to remove is the very front piece of tape. That's why I did it this way. So it keeps everything nice and neat and together. Okay, now I can just slide them in. So they'll be in the right order. Take your time here. If you put it in incorrectly or you don't snap them in correctly, it's really in the neck to get these things back out again. So they go in on an angle. You're going to go in on an angle and then you're going to lock them in. Just take your time. The hose is in your way, move it out of your way. There, right, I see I'm getting it. And then you want to lock down this here. down. This is the tough part because these two are locked real close together. There, I got that one. Find a good spot to push on and then push it in. There, now they're all locked in. Now we can turn the hose. Now, if the hose is a little tangled, take your time, straighten it out. Okay, I made sure the hose wasn't twisted. That looks good. Now I'm going to push the cartridge, I'm going to hold the hose and push the cartridges all the way over to the right. I can actually see it right there. Now that's going to give me the hose travel that I'm looking for. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the little clip in here to hold that hose. There you go. And then you can just snap the hose snapped in. And this is what I'm looking for. Not too much slack here. I don't want too much. And I'm going to slide it in the back. And there again, I put a little hose bracket here to kind of give it a little guidance through there. So I'll slip it through there. There you go. That'll hold it nice and straight. Now we can lock the hinges back down again. But before I do, I'm going to manually move to make sure I've got the hose coming. It's not too tight or too loose. That looks good. That's what you want. That's exactly the way you want it. Now sometimes it gets pushed over so far I can't reach it. So I use a little pair of needle nose to pull it out. Now I can go back the other way. That looks good. That's what you want. That's exactly what you want. Now you can lock these back down. Just get it down there and then push, pull it forward. When you get it down there, just pull it forward. There, like that, locked in. 
Same thing on the other side. Pull it forward. And now we supply you with this little green interlock plug. That's going to go down where the switch is, which is on right in the corner over here. It's not in, or it's not down all the way. When you turn it on, it'll say the cover is open. I'm going to push it down. Now, the other thing is, I had this down. Make sure you put that up, otherwise you'll get another error code. So right now I'm going to leave the top open like this because i got the inner plug. Then I'm going to be able to watch the hose go back and forth. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you how to install is a safety catch. Here's a safety catch. That's going to hold it next to the printer so it doesn't accidentally get knocked over or people pick it up to look at it because that can cause flooding. Now we mark it and we give you instructions. We give our A, that goes on the back of the ink tank, and B goes and sticks to the printer. So I'm going to assemble it and then I'll peel side A and stick it on. Because See, side A has a closed in end. So that's why it's got to go like this. The end sticks up in the air and then this slides in to the other one. And then you'll be able to peel and stick it to the ink tank. Okay, now I peeled it. And I stuck it right to the ink tank. And then see, I'll line it up like this. I'll put another hose bracket here. This is a new printer, so I'll put the hose bracket right here. And then I can just peel and stick this to the printer right there. Now remember, we rocked the ink bottles. I'm going to open up the clamp. It's very important. If I would have forgot that, I wouldn't have got any copies or would have starved the printhead. Now the next step is to open up the little vent plugs in the back. Sometimes if you have a paper towel, you won't get any ink on your fingers. It has to be open because air has to go into the isobaric chamber for the ink to flow to the printhead. Now this chamber is not used. There's our double loop bracket, opened up, close it. And by having the long injectors, I'll point this out, you'll be able to go right into that large, you plug off the small one, you open up the big one, you'll be able to go right in and fill the ink tank back up. There again on the printed instructions, you'll get some more details about that. But that's the way I'm going to set it up, just like that. Really nice. I mean, that's, this will come off if you ever want to take it off, and you can go use a paper clip. That's easier. That's it. Now I'll go plug it in. We'll turn it on. Okay, now I just turned on the printer. It's going to go check. Probably give you an error code to me, telling me that I didn't sh shut the printer down correctly. Then we'll complete the rest of the install. Let's take a second. There again, I have the green clip in, so things just slid us down, and I'm watching my hose travel. Everything looking good. Priming up. I've got my shutoff open. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even leave the lid open and run the printer like this, or you can close it down. When you go to close it down, you're going to have to pull, pull this down just a little bit because of that piece that's on that printer. It might hit. Like, see if I go pull forward. Oh, that time it missed it. Okay, good. I might have put it back far. I put this a little bit back a little bit farther. Okay, it says I improperly shut down. Just said okay. That's it. Now we're going to go to set up, say OK, because I'm going to go to maintenance, and I'm going to print out a nozzle check. Normally I would do one or two cleans, but right now I'm just going to print out a nozzle check. OK, yes, shows the ink levels. Now as you're printing along, it's going to say, well, we'll pick a color, magenta is out of ink. How do you reset the ink? You open the lid up, remove the green interlock plug, cartridges are going to come over. As soon as they do, put the green plug back in, that color will reset. You don't have to take the cartridges out, you don't have to do anything. That's how you reset. That's how you reset your ink levels. 
and here it's running through its setup, priming that printhead. Always set the printer to print on quality, best, or high. It's actually going to be better for the printhead. You'll use less ink, you'll clean less, and that'll keep that printhead a lot cooler. Because the more ink you put in there, the cooler the printhead stays. The interlock plug, it sticks up a little bit. So when you go to shut the top, this side will stay up a little bit, and this side might drop down. So that lid bracket's going to help it so it stays just like that. And then you'll be able to continue to print. So you're going to stick, peel and stick it right about there at the corner. And of course then you've got your interlock jumper here, a little rubber jumper that goes in this little hole here. That's where the switch is. So the printer thinks the lid is down. So you're going to put that in. If you don't have that in, you can't use the printer. got to put it in. And you know when you have it incorrect, because you won't get a, an error message. Here comes the nozzle check. Looks really good. That's what you want. That's how easy it was to install. Now I can put the lid down. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to print one more. I have to put the lid down so you can see. That's how it sounds when it prints it out. Like I said, you might want to put a little standoff here. That's what you want. You may want to leave, leave this open. That's up to you. But this is the little green interlock plug. That's got to be in for the printer to work. When it says you're out of whatever color, you're going to take that out. They're going to come over, put it back in. It's going to reset that particular color back up. You don't have to take the cartridges out. You don't have to do anything. That's how simple it was to install our Executive Series 3 continuous ink system by Ink Products.